Okay, so we already know that the primary lymph lymphoid organs, they are responsible for production and maturation of T cells, okay? And the secondary organs, their main function is to activate the T cells, okay? The activation uh, due to any problem that the body, that the organism may face, okay? Uh, if this is an infection or if the, either if, if this is an accident in which uh, you have a fracture or a skin injury. So those types of uh, injuries and infections, the, we, we will usually re require uh, the activation of T lymphocytes. So the activation uh, is mainly uh, done by the secondary lymphoid organs, which includes lymph nodes. So we have lymph nodes everywhere in our body. Uh, they are mainly located here in the axilla, in the cervical area, okay, uh, in the groin area as well. We have the spleen and we have lymphoid nodules. Uh, the lymphoid nodules, uh, they, are, they are considered mass, masses of lymphoid tissue that they also have immune response. So first of all, the lymph nodes. The lymph nodes, they have this shape of a bean, okay? A bean, the shape and the size of a bean, approximately 2.5 centimeters. Uh, they usually occur in groups. Uh, they are located in, uh, superficially in, and also deep in the body. Uh, I need you to remember the, the lecture about the circulatory system in which uh, you learned the um, structure of the lymph vessels and also we have the presence of uh, lymphatic capillaries superficially in the skin and also others that they are located more deep in the skin, in the body. Uh, they are massively concentrated near, near the mammary glands, the axilla and the groin, the cervical area as well. Their main function is, is, is that they act filtrating the lymph Okay, the lymph that uh, runs in the lymphatic vessels, in the lymph vessels, they, they eventually, they enter the lymph node and here within this structure, uh, the filtration occurs. Okay, so the structure of the lymph nodes, uh, it basically has a nilum here, medially, okay, in this elum, we have, uh, this is the place where we have uh, the, uh, the exit of the efferent lymphatic vessels. Okay, we have the capsule, which is made of fib uh, fibrotic tissue. We have a cortex, so this area here. Uh, so they, they form like, uh, so quite similar uh, to the um, uh, nodules that we that you learned in the thymus, so have like some no, uh, nodules, and this is considered the, the cortex. And within the cortex, here deep inside, we have the medulla. Okay, in this uh, this light purple color, and if you take a look here uh, in the lateral uh, part, so externally in the lymph node, we have the presence of um, afferent lymphatic vessels. So considering the systemic circulation, okay, so we have lymph running in the lymphatic vessels. Okay, so eventually the, lymph the lymphatic vessels, they need uh, they will enter the lymph nodes here, peripherally in the lymph node. They will enter here for, for filtration, okay? So they enter peripherally in the lymph node. Here in these uh, internal structures, 
they are the lymph will be filtrated and then it will exit through the ilum by via the efferent lymphatic vessels so they exit here in the, at the level of the ilum and then they go uh, to the to the systemic circulation again uh, so this is uh, the basic structure of a lymph node and here internally uh, in these different regions of a lymph node uh, we can have different types of cells we can find B cells, T cells, dendritic cells, and also macrophages here. So all those cells, they will act in this process of filtration here inside the lymph node. The other secondary organ, we have the spleen. The spleen is considered the largest uh, single mass of lymphatic tissue that we have in the body. The spleen is located in the upper left quadrant of the abdominal cavity. Okay, so this is also called the left hypochondrium. Uh, the spleen lies uh, in the lateral border of the stomach uh, and is located between the stomach here and the diaphragm, uh, which lies more here uh, superiorly. Okay, in, the, in this view. Uh, topographically speaking, the spleen occupies uh, the area uh, approximately between the ninth and the eleventh ribs, okay, in the lateral view, and considering the mid axillary line here lies like slightly posterior to the mid axillary line. Uh, the, if you take a look in the transverse section or in the abdominal cavity, we have uh, this, uh, this um, compartment, okay? So the blue compartment here is the peritoneum. So here we have the intraperitoneal organs, uh, including the stomach and the spleen. The spleen here in blue right uh, so the spleen is covered by a capsule of dense connective tissue similar in structure to a large lymph node the spleen has approximately 12 centimeters uh, of length the spleen connects to the stomach here the spleen in blue the stomach in green we have a ligament that is called gastrosplenic ligament so they so this ligament helps to support the spleen in the abdominal cavity uh, so this is one ligament okay connecting gastro the stomach with the spleen gastrosplenic we also have another ligament that connects the spleen here to the left kidney in in yellow so this is the splenorenal ligament, uh, reminding that the, the kidneys, they are retroperitoneal organs. If you see here, they are located outside the peritoneum, okay? Uh, but they, even though they are, uh, there is a connection between the spleen and the left kidney via splenorenal ligament. Internally, the, key, the spleen is, uh, consists of uh, a, a pulp. There is a pulp here uh, inside the spleen. So externally, we have a capsule and internally, we have the pulp. Uh, we have white pulp that you see here uh, more internally. The white pulp, if you see here, we have like their artery and veins, okay? We have, uh, this artery is called splenic artery, okay, it's the artery of the spleen. And this artery enters the white pulp. So here, uh, the white pulp is mainly composed of lymphoid tissue. Uh, so here, including uh, T lymphocytes, okay? 
And the main act, act, the function of the white pulp is to activate uh, the immune cells. Uh, in any case, there is uh, infection or the organ or the organism is in danger. Uh, we also have the red pulp that you see here in red, and it's mainly composed by sinusoidal capillaries. So we have many, many, many capillaries. So remember the sinusoid, sinusoidal capillaries, they have uh, large pores, like approximately 30 micrometers of diameter. And the main functions of the uh, red pulp, well, actually considering that the red pulp uh, has many capillaries, it acts as a blood storage. So in a situation in which uh, the individual may have a hemorrhagic, um, a hemorrhagic shock, so is losing uh, lots of lot, large amounts of blood volume, the spleen can act as a blood reservoir here because of the red pulp. And the main functions uh, are to remove worn out or defective red blood cells and platelets, considering that red blood cells, they have like a lifespan of approximately uh, four months, okay, 120 days. And the platelets, they have a, a lifespan even shorter of uh, approximately uh, eight, eight days. So this, uh, the red pulp uh, is responsible for removing, destroying the worn out uh, red blood cells and platelets. Can also act to store platelets uh, and Finally, in, during the fetal life in the babies, the, the spleen uh, is an organ that does hematopoiesis, okay? It can uh, produce uh, new blood components in the fetus. The lymphoid nodules are like the third organs that are considered secondary lymphoid organs. The lymphoid nodules, they are masses of non-encapsulated lymphoid tissues. Non-encapsulated because uh, both the spleen and, and also the lymph nodes, they, as you, you learned previously, they have an external capsule, dense, uh, connective tissue in this capsule. The lymphoid nodules, they don't have a capsule, okay? So they are non-encapsulated. The lymphoid nodules, they occur in the connective tissue of mucous membranes of different systems, okay? Uh, so example, the respiratory system, we have uh, our uh, nasal mucosa, is in direct contact with the environment, uh, the air in the environment. So we are breathing, like eventually we can breathe toxic substances, that these substances, they will be trapped uh, in the nasal mucosa. So we also have in the leaning of the, of the pharyngeal mucosa in the respiratory system, we have some lymphoid masses, lymphoid nodules, that they will fight against potential um, danger of toxic substances in the air, or considering the digestive system, we also have lymphoid nodules in the, in the mouth cavity, in the oral cavity, okay? So basically everywhere we have a mucosa, we have the presence of lymphoid nodules. Um, so in different system, okay, respiratory system, the digestive system, okay, um, uh, in the vagina as well. So we have different types of mucosa and lymphoid nodules. Some of them, they occur as large aggreg aggregations in specific parts of the body. So these large aggregations, including 
uh, as examples the appendix uh, of the, in the digestive system. We have uh, MALT, uh, M-A-L-T, uh, which stands for mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. Okay, so MALT is like a general terminology for this mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. Uh, and inside MALT, we have like different uh, subtypes of classifications. So in, according to the type of mucosa, okay, we are, we are referring to. Example, we have uh, in the respiratory system, we have in the bronchial mucosa. So this is called uh, uh, BA, BA, uh, LT in case of bronchial. And we can also give an example of uh, the gut, okay, GALT, which is gut associated lymphoid, lymphoid tissue. And we also have these payer patches, which are uh, within the digestive system, okay, in the intestines. They are found in the intestines. We have the tonsils and the adenoids, um, which we will uh, see. Uh, further here. So the appendix is this mass, this large mass of lymphoid um, tissue, okay, also called as, also known as the vermifoid appendix, okay. So according to these different um, to these different masses. So these different masses of lymphoid tissues, they are actually located in strategic points that could be potential uh, sites for infection, okay? As you see here. So in case of infection of the gastrointestinal tract, we have the appendix, the vermifoid appendix, which will uh, fight uh, local, locally, local infections here in this area. We have the payer, payer's patches located in the ileum, okay? So here we have a picture internally in the ileum and externally we can see those little uh, masses. They are considered a component of GALT, okay? Which is gut-associated lymphoid tissue, which is part of MALT, the general mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue. So these here, Peyer's patches, they will fight uh, against local infections in this area, in this organ, okay? We have the tonsils and the adenoids, which uh, are mainly present uh, here within the uh, respiratory epithelium and oral uh, epithelium. We have basically five ton tonsils. We have one pharyngeal tonsil, which is a big mass here located posteriorly uh, to the nasal uh, cavity, the nasal pharyngeal, the pharyngeal epithelium. Okay, we have uh, laterally, uh, posteriorly in the mouth, the palatine tonsils. We have two. Okay. Uh, and we also have here a pair uh, of lingual tonsils located in the base, posteriorly in the base of the tongue. Um, so in total, uh, we normally have five, okay? So it's one pharyngeal tonsil, two palatine tonsils, and two lingual tonsils. So this tonsil that you see here are the palatine tonsils, okay? Located posteriorly here in the um, oral cavity. Uh, so that's it for now. Uh, you have you had uh, an overview of the secondary lymphoid organs in the immune system. Thanks for watching.